Okay, uh, I'll assume that everyone can hear me. So I'll go ahead. Uh, so welcome everyone to this 508 compliance uh, presentation on our offering for 508 compliance. Is your PEG application accessible? So let me, let's go ahead and get started here. So what we'll cover, so we'll first go over Section 508-101. We're first give you an overview, okay? What is Section 508? Uh, what are the implications of not meeting 508? Uh, then we'll go over PEGA and its relationship to Section 508 um, and what are the common problems that occur. Um, so, and then third and final, we go over Sky's unique 508 offering. So what we have come up with solutions and strategies to fix certain 508 issues. Okay, so what is Section 508? Section 508 was made part of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 in 1998. It requires federal agencies to make their electronic and information technology accessible to people with disabilities. The refresh in January of 2017 updated accessibility guidelines and the requirements for information and communication technology uh, in the federal sector. Oh, sorry, there seems to be someone who's been moving the slides. Let's go back here. So the guideline affects all federal agencies as well as any company that does business with the federal government. This includes private contractors, the financial industry, many legal organizations, and partners of those agencies operating within the United States. So what are the risks of non-compliance? Well, there's reputational risk and then there's financial risk. So on a reputational basis, it's the right thing to do. One in four Americans has some type of disability and about half of those are considered to be severely dis disabled. By ignoring the accessibility needs of your audience, they're underserved. Um, and then financially, it could be very costly to be non-compliant. For example, the US Small Business Administration was sued by the National Federation of the Blind and had to pay five million to become compliant with Section 508, in addition to significant legal fees. So let's go ahead and, sorry, there seems to be an issue with my PowerPoint here. Okay. so. What is the unique about PEGA applications and making them 508 compliant? So if you're in this booth, you're probably familiar somewhat with PEGA applications and how they interact with 508 compliancy. Well, the first major roadblock here is a lack of understanding of what the Section 508 standards are in the first place. If you ask a developer who's working on PEGA, hey, what is 508? How do you implement the 508 changes? They might give you a range of answers from I don't know to Oh, just add the accessibility rule set and that should fix everything. Uh, from our experience, we found that to not be the case. You actually need to dig into the details and try to understand this issue. The next roadblock is the nature of PEGA as a tool itself. So the strength of the low code development uh, is great for creating these uh, strong applications that it can easily route different assignments to different people. but the low code is also a weakness when it comes to 508 because the front end uh, generates a lot of the UI. So you're heavily dependent on what is automatically generated. Uh, and then the third roadblock, uh, there's no guardrails in place. So a PEGA developer can go along and create certain UI elements without a knowledge of, oh, how will this affect certain 508 outcomes? Uh, there's no restrictions in place the developer is able to change things here and there with no implications of no, no feedback on how this will affect the 508 compliancy. And then last is procrastination. So what a lot of applications will do is they'll say, hey, our application needs to be 508 compliant, but they'll wait to the last second to do that. And with the way that 508 is laid out, this can be very costly if you don't plan ahead of time, okay, what are the unique features that we need to put in place in order for this to be a 508 uh, compliant application? So what are our offerings? So uh, we have uh, an assessment, which is us going in and actually taking your 508 
or rather your application and assessing, okay, how 508 compliant is your application, giving it a score, giving you an understanding, okay, what are the major issues? Uh, we have a strategy offering where we actually come up with, okay, what is the strategy? What are the type of things that we will do to make this application or what can make this application 508 compliant? And then we have uh, remediation. So this is the actual fix. So we offer to actually go in and fix the application uh, where the 508 issues are occurring. And then enforcement is our last offering where we actually leave behind breadcrumbs or uh, individual guidelines for developers to follow so that any additional features that are added in the future or uh, any additional development can follow the proper 508 uh, guidelines. So then this is my queue to start up the navigation demo. Bear with me one second. So we have three major components of our framework that will help out your application become 508 compliant. This first one is navigation. So those of you that are familiar with PEG applications can see the screen and notice it's a case manager portal. Now you can go ahead and try this on your PEG application, try uh, tabbing or navigating through the, this is the dashboard and you'll notice that it, what's occurring is not happening uh, here where the focus is easily seen and you can follow it uh, along with the tabs. Uh, likewise, you can go in between screens and the focus comes back to where you clicked. Here we're navigating across the top of the screen, never lo losing the focus even when we're opening up different pages. And then now we'll try to open up the case. If you try this in your standard PEGA application, uh, you would lose the focus in this case. So we're gonna open up a case, assistant request. So the focus has automatically gone to the first element of this first new screen. We're able to tab through. And once what happens when we cancel out? Well, the focus now returns to the menu. So, this time around, we're actually going to go through the case. And we're going to go through the case only using, trying to use only the keyboard navigation. So notice that the focus goes to the first element of the case. So that way, someone who doesn't have access to the screen always knows they start out in the first element of the case. They're able to navigate through completely just using the keyboard. Here, we'll enter in a customer ID that's required pass through and then go to submit it to the next page. And then notice that the, the focus always goes to the first element, no matter what page we're on. Here we'll skip through, go to the next page. We'll probably show you one more example of the element going to the first page. Always see how it jumps to the first element, identify vehicle. So I encourage those of you that are watching that have access to a personal edition or some application to try to do this on their application. Notice that it doesn't, it's rather difficult to actually navigate like this. Uh, here we have an example of uh, an error required field, right? So card numbers have a certain format that's associated with them. Here we just put a dash in and we're doing that on purpose. We'll put an expiration date, try to submit it. We get a validation error. So the validation error, the focus pops automatically up to the error, which allows someone who is not uh, able to see the screen to know what, okay, what is the, what is the issue that we've done incorrectly here? They're able to read the error. And on top of that, they have a short key where they're able to jump to the specific error and then correct it. It's very important for 508 that uh, a end user is able to navigate through an application without having to see the screen, just uh, using a screen reader. So the last thing I want to show in this navigation is uh, the ability to turn on and off any individual features that we've added. So we've run into issues with, say, the accessibility rule set. Oh, sorry, my video has stopped playing. Restart that real quick. Um, where it's a one shot all and say you have a business requirement is heavily dependent on a certain UI aspect. If any of our features interfere with that business requirement, you have the freedom to turn off that specific feature and um, and keep the remaining elements. So here we showcase this before, uh, where we, we 
navigated through this menu and we navigated back to the top of the screen. Now here we turned off that functionality. We no longer navigate to the top of the screen. So that's it for the navigation portion. So I'll return quickly back to the PowerPoint and then go to the next slide, which is the evaluation slide. So I'll start the evaluation demo up real quick. So uh, for those of you that want to understand, okay, where is my PIG application? Where does it stand in 508 compliancy? Uh, there's a number of tools that we can use to kind of figure that out, including the out of the box accessibility inspector. So this gives you a wide breadth of kind of understanding and it links back to the specific uh, 508 um, linked rule. You can tell you, okay, what is a colorblind person seeing? What is a colorblind not seeing? Um, it is limited in terms of uh, uh, the number of requirements in 508. So uh, it only covers a small sliver of the 508 requirements. So to expand on that, we have this Andy tool, which you can add as a browser extension. It's provided by the Social Security Administration. It actually tells you, okay, what are the specific issues for certain HTML elements on the screen? Here we're doing, uh, I believe, color contrast. Uh, and it actually tells us, okay, what are the number of errors for color contrast on the screen? Um, and if we click on that, we actually would see the individual elements. Now that these two tools don't tell us everything that could be wrong with the screen. Um, so uh, we've actually invested in a third uh, option here. So uh, any PEGA developer knows this screen, um, they'll be able to run this rule. It actually takes the HTML of any given page. So as you're going through a case, we have the individual HTML uh, and we have a webhook that can be exchanged with any third party uh, analyzer. And it brings back, okay, what is the accessibility score uh, for A, uh, AA and AAA, uh, as well as the individual elements. So uh, you can look down, okay, and see, okay, what specific elements meet AA, what specific elements meet single A, in a far deeper view than either Andy or the uh, inspection uh, editor. Okay, and then that, my next cue is for enforcement. So the enforcement is the last major component of our 508 uh, software offering. So say you have a developer who's not that familiar with individual 508s in, ins and outs. So we've added specific warnings to different UI components so that if they don't do say the proper, they don't add the proper text so that a screen reader can't pick up what that individual element is doing. We'll actually give a warning at the top of the screen saying, hey, a screen reader won't be able to, to read this, please add a helper text. So it, it kind of makes the application dummy proof. Um, a lot of developers won't know what 508 is, but if we add these guardrails in, um, it would actually help the score out. So here we'll add the helper text, we'll add uh, first name, which is pretty descriptive for this field name. And then we go ahead and save it and notice that the warning at top is completely gone. So that ends the third and final uh, component that we wanted to show off. So let me just in conclusion state, uh, I, hope, I hope that you see how our offering makes this much simpler and faster and less of a headache. Uh, if you don't know where to start, I hope you have an idea of, of what makes this process easier. Uh, and most importantly, I hope this shows the significance of the 508 concern. Um, any questions?